I was in a line with a black lady who had like a MAGA hat and in front of me was like another lady who had a MAGA hat and they're looking at each other like finally like a chance where we can talk about like good conservative values and they look at me and they're like yeah more black people who agree with us and I'm like I am also in this line <laughs> yeah 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 Hi, I'm Ty. Okay. What brought you to CPAC 2020? Uh, this is uh, an anthropological expedition for me. Oh, awesome. Okay, so you're studying humans, more or less? M more or less. Okay. So I'm uh, from Alaska. Nice. Uh, I'm non-Republican. Okay. And, uh, but the Republican Party's in charge. Yeah. And they're shaping our country uh, more than anybody else. And I wanted to come and uh, learn about uh, folks. And uh, I've grown up in a much different uh, political environment than that. Tell me about the political environment in Alaska. Well, in, in, um, in Alaska, it's a red state by and large. But when I say my environment, I mean my neighborhood, mm. which is not. It's okay. So I was born in California. I, I'm in Tennessee right now, but California has its string of red governors. It's never voted blue, but it runs very much in a, actually it runs pretty terribly, but it runs very much in like, we're not a red state even though we have a, a Republican governor. I'm wondering like on a personal level, where are your values at? Like what's a, what's a topic that means a lot to you? Uh, you know, being in Alaska, um, climate change is big. It's, um, there's no theory to it. It's real. There's villages falling in, into the ocean. Um, there's fisheries which I'm involved in, which are tanking because the ocean's getting warmer. So uh, we've moved. Um, uh, wow, we moved well beyond debate. Okay. About, about when and what it's uh, is happening. Uh, so if, he's, if uh, you can see around here, there's a lot of people that would deny climate change, yeah. right? Have you heard any good arguments from them with regard to it, or anything that makes you pause and be like? I've been engaging with uh, with minority folks here that um, are interested in the topic, mm -hmm. and there are, you know, there's a, uh, a growing interest within the party. Towards recognizing climate yeah. change. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I had met uh, the young republic, young conservatives for putting carbon dividends in yeah. place. I just came out of. Uh, they were conservatives that recognize that climate change is real, but they want to develop a means to enable a reduction of regulations, but also profit for people at the same time too. The the numbers that they were quoting me didn't seem <laughs> feasible at the point, but I, I respected the fact that they're a conservative group that recognizes climate change is a real thing. I, my background, by the way, is I'm a scientist, and I've worked towards making biodiesel uh, as a as a need because we know we need supplementary fuel platforms and we know that if we make a report that details or says the word climate change in it, it most likely won't get published. And because we are in a political climate where stuff like that gets not as much research funding as we would like. So, so what's your take on um, the ability of deregulation to uh, curb uh, climate emissions? Can we, is this better? All right, cool. I'm sorry, could you say um, that again? Um, curious to get your take on the, the proposal I'm hearing here, one of the pillars is deregulation yeah. um, as a means to, as a pillar to re reducing our emission. Mm. And um, I'm just curious to get your take on whether you think that uh, Man, it might, is, might be a viable approach. Dude, it's such a complicated thing because companies have people dedicated trying to figure out any way possible to make their company be better than others, but also to avoid having to spend money on regulations whatsoever. Like entire groups, floors, and divisions dedicated for just that sole purpose. I worry if by deregulating, we're making it easier for them to skirt loops. Like I feel like those regulations were put into place because someone caught a loophole. And so they're trying to plug a loophole. And right now we have a really bad situation where there's a lot of fingers in like the well wall, which is like the variety of different regulations that we have but they're there to plug clear holes that were initially put. Maybe we just need like a consolidated second draft to optimize what worked and to take out what didn't, rather than to throw away everything and replace it with a brand new plan. Yeah. That's my thought. Yeah. What do you, feel well, free to ask me questions on that. Yeah, the, um, 
It seems like we've been operating on more or less a free market economy um, for decades here. Mm -hmm. where it's led us to a climate crisis and uh, the same economic paradigm that got us to the crisis, it's hard to, um, it's hard to have a lot of confidence it's going to be the same paradigm that leads us away. Mm, I hear that too. Are you worried, particularly in an event like this, about the future oh. of like maybe even Alaska or anything Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> like obviously, is it just climate change or is it more of like a, is it like a, uh, I don't want to fill. I don't want to fill in. Like, could you give me like your top three like major concerning things beyond climate change? Because um, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Divisiveness is, is is right up there. Divisiveness and, and, is really uh, really huge. Um, and that's uh, part of why I'm intrigued by what you're doing right here. Thank you. Thank and, you. Yeah. Uh, and part of why I'm, uh, I came here too yeah. is uh, I had this. So here's a funny thing. I mean, I I, I could show you a picture of what I looked like four days ago. <laughs> Okay. Before yeah. I took the hair and uh -huh. all the beard off and borrowed these clothes from a friend of mine. Yeah. Um, all you gotta do is shave, cut my hair, walk in here, and everybody here knows what my. They think they know who I am. I see. I'm here. You got, yeah, you look the part. I yeah. Look the part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, and people tell me, God, everybody here is just so friendly. It's like one big family. But uh, but if they knew I was a liberal, they yeah. might not say that. Sure. Thing. You want to know this? Um, when I had my suitcases here, and I'm like lining up, and we're getting ready to build our booth, I was in a line with a black lady who had like a MAGA hat, and in front of me was like another lady who had a MAGA hat, and they're looking at each other like, finally, like a chance where we can talk about like good conservative values, and they look at me and they're like, yeah, more black people who agree with us, and I'm like, I am also in this line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's assumption about, about about who you are. Right, right, um, right, right. So I think it's it's going around regardless of like what yeah. your skin tone is. But it is an interesting thing. Like you have a better disguise than I do. I do. I did. I, right. I, all, all I had to do was shave. You know, <laughs> it was a bigger challenge for you. Right, uh, right. Though, how, you know, do you think that it's impossible, or if what kind of walls do you foresee as a as a liberal? maybe having an out talk with a conservative here. Because I can tell you I'm in more or less the same boat as you are, but I've found that if I make it a conversation rather than a debate or an argument, and we just sit down and you know get away from an audience and just say like, what do you believe and why do you believe it? And instead of being like, here are your conclusions and here are my counterfacts, it's more of like, can we work together to figure out why you believe this and see if that's the best option or if you're using a reliable way to reach that conclusion so, or not. So here's a real reason I'm here. Talk to me. It's, um, it seems we are voting in our collective disinterest mm. uh, on some major issues. That means a lot. Climate change is being one of them. Yeah. And I'm baffled that we can't find leaders that articulate policies and directions forward that would benefit 80% of us, you know, economically, uh, um, uh, you know, each generation right now is worse off economically than the one before them. Mm. Um, economy's booming for who, mm. you know, it's, it's not for me, mm. uh, and it's not for a whole bunch of other people that are here buying mega hats. Uh, but, but how come we can't come together and find policies? that benefit 80% of us. Yeah. And and uh, and so I was wondering how much blame do I have? How much of my rhetoric is adding to the divisiveness? That's a good that, thought. That, uh, so I'm just going to come. And, cool. Uh, and see uh, see where I can find common ground and uh, shake people's hands and see if I can get a burger and a beer with them. Can I make a, some advice? Yes. All right. So what we do here is called street epistemology. And if you want to talk about divisiveness, I live in Tennessee and I'm an atheist, right? And I talk to a lot of religious people. The tenor, or the tenor of the conversations is not what you might immediately think when it's an atheist talking to someone that believes in a God. Because we actually have a lot of common ground. We just disagree on one thing, on whether or not we think, believe in a God. Everything else we tend to agree on. Values, family, love, life. More than 80%. 
I can agree with most every single person who has like a very devout fundamental belief in a God and we can see eye to eye in a five minute conversation to the point where by the end of the conversation we can work together to find out how they arrived at the God belief realize that may not necessarily be the most reliable way to reach that conclusion and they'll be like maybe I shouldn't be as closed minded on my God because now that I met someone who's you know an open minded atheist I can at least say hey there's different people out there I'm willing to reconsider my beliefs where they came from and maybe there's a better platform for me to stand yeah. on than just this is what my God told me. So, so uh, you engage in this type of conversation, uh, uh, but more focus on the religious. No, aspect. I literally talk about whatever someone you, wants okay. to. But I will deal with religion a lot because I often open the conversation with let's talk about something that motivates you or means a lot to you. Right. And in Tennessee, and, and you're in Tennessee. That's what you get. It's religion. Yeah. Though here it's been politics, and I'll I'll talk with people who are I'm absolutely pro-life at the end of say like a 10-minute talk. I would be willing to have a conversation with someone because I think that's a good point. And then we leave. But I really do believe that there's a lot of division and not enough fruitful conversation willing to be had between different parties. And if that willingness was there, and if I can exacerbate that willingness by showing that it's easy and it's possible, that means a lot. That would mean so, a lot. Um, do you self-identify as a liberal? No, not really. I'm more of like, I'm, I'm liberal about some things and I'm conservative about some things. Yep. I like to say, I want to hear the issue. I want to know what people are thinking right. and I'll tell you what my point of view is. Yeah, there you go. But in general, I can, depending on what the topic is, if I had to pick a room, <laughs> if I had to pick a room, uh, I could say, I know what frame of mind I would have to be in to be really get along well with a lot of liberals. And I think right now, I don't like the them and us mentality. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And if people in... For example, that guy's, I don't want to start pointing out, but there are conservatives over there who want liberal ident I, things to happen, but they're stuck in a conservative platform and, they, and a, a conservative mindset. So they, they, they've got uh, liberal ideas they'd like to promote. Yeah, and they're like, man, I think we should try to legalize certain kinds of drugs because I, I don't like you know people being arrested for nonviolent crimes. It's like, yeah, but you're in the wrong group because that's what the liberal side is. Yeah, but I'd rather change the conservatives because I, I there's no ground for me there. I'm like... And I can talk to liberals who feel probably the opposite on other things, but I feel like most part, most of the time it's just people and their personal values, and they're trying to line it up with, you know, a square peg with their round hole, yeah. and they can do with whatever they can. Yeah. I think every person here is trying to fool themselves that Trump perfectly identifies with them, but in a quick conversation, you can find contrast and nuance there. Well, you know what's um, my experience here has been the most rewarding pieces have been the one-on-ones mm. people I've never met I'm sitting there hey is that chair open sure yep. and boom and then <laughs> yep. we have this great exchange and then I go to hear the vice president speak and, and there's some chanting and um, some uh, some kind of mob response tribalism yeah. tribalism which is honestly spooky to me because uh, what's being cheered is nothing that's well articulated you know it's just they're they're sound bites. yeah uh, and, yeah yes and, and uh, I, I can't stand and cheer a soundbite uh, yeah and what's they, scary is when you talk one-on-one and it's just sound bites that you're getting back like this is the election of our generation yeah we have to close the borders yeah but this but, thing but, but my one-on-ones have all gone right beyond that you know it's like where are you from and, and, and uh, what are you passionate about and, and they're just great human to human conversations exactly and you'd be surprised how many people don't think they can do that yeah I would like to try something um, I have two cards I have my Let's Chat card that's my YouTube channel Cordial Curiosity also produces a lot of content this one shows where all the people around the world push their videos if you are willing to It'd be cool if you kept doing these kinds of talks, but not just at CPAC, but also in Alaska when you go back, if you go back to Alaska. Yep. And just continue to show, continue to have these conversations. If you're ever planning on documenting these talks that you're having, please get in touch with us because we can promote the, the effort that you're doing. There are people who have like their cell phone on a table and just record a one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone that might disagree with them. And there's actually... And so they're doing just audio. They can, there are some people who do just audio yeah. even. I did yeah. just audio for a long period of time. And this is me in uh, Kentucky at a, at a park. This lady was super sweet, but we wouldn't normally agree with each other if we were trying to debate or have an argument. By the end, she completely 
like understood where I was coming from and actually reduced her confidence in the position. And what we find is a lot of people are very, very confident in things that they haven't really well researched or well understood. And if you ask them some questions just about how did you arrive at your method, their confidence drops as, yes, as a reflection yeah. of, well, I never really thought about that. Yeah. And when and, they're- And hence the problem with sound bites. Yes. Because, because, because you don't have to back them up with anything. You just say them. You just say them and you hope the other person understands it. Well, and, and you, they do. I mean, the vice president knows his crowd. Is, he just throws a piece of red meat out there. Yeah. I feel like we're on the same level on a lot of yeah. this stuff. I would love to see you record your talks with people and then maybe get in touch with me and then okay. say like, dude, or even if you want to be on my radio show, I do a radio show every Sunday. Um, if you just want to call and be like, hey, I, I talked to like four people today or I, I was thinking about talking to someone next month. And I'd be like, cool, man, we're supporting you in Alaska. So, so your radio show um, are about stories of doing this. Exactly, yes. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I could, if I had some intriguing conversations, I could come, I could call you and just recount them. Absolutely. So I, I talked to this, this person I didn't think I could get along with and here's what happened. Hank, that's exactly what we do. Yeah. yeah. And we have people from France, Denmark, South America, Canada, Brazil. Uh, I already said Canada. We got a lot of Canadians. Yeah. Uh, but there are so many people who are willing to try to promote good conversation between people. And I think it, it, it speaks to me in the sense of like, most people aren't interested in that because they already have a story they're comfortable with. And it's like, that story is trash. Just talk to someone on the other side. You can do it. And yeah. when you do it, it's gonna, sh it, they'll show you well, where everything so, is. So get this, I'm a, um, uh, I'm a writer. Oh, cool. Uh, so this CPAC, expedition is uh is just doing some research for a book and, nice and the uh the other piece of it is going back to my hometown in alaska where i've got four high school buddies i used to drink beer with nice um one of them's a born again evangelical uh one of them is a very wealthy uh, uh stockbroker wealth manager guy another one's a uh, bishop in the mormon church okay uh, and I'm a backwoods subsistence guy, just trying to minimize how much money I have to earn and see how much fish and deer and uh, potatoes I can eat. <laughs> nice. Right? So that's just this great diversity. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. All graduating at the same time. Uh, so I'm just making a point of going out and sitting down with each one of these guys and buying nice. them all a burger and a beer. Perfect. And, uh, and just, it's, uh, I graduated in 1985. Let's catch up. Nice, uh, nice, uh, exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. We have a lady that goes to bars and does the exact same with her group of friends. She calls her channel Sarah After Dark, and she's she's really really great. This is Raul. He's he's a local here. He's a vet. Oh yeah. And he'll talk to guys on college campuses. Uh, uh, Reed makes movies, and he's in L.A. and he has his own style. I just feel like everyone contributes a little bit when they're willing. There's no single person that you can't talk to because every single person is different. Yeah. So as long as someone's willing to have a conversation there's always going to be someone that you can match with them. And I feel like it. this will defeat agendas in like 24-hour news cycles. Yeah. Or in stump speeches by political officials who try to turn people against each other. Because anybody can have a conversation with anybody. And that's yeah. not something that you need the money to do. You don't need a YouTube channel. You just need a, a willingness to go out and do it. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, I'm, a, I'm all about it. It's... Uh, it's a great way to learn a whole bunch about yourself. And oh, your yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Man, I can't tell you where I thought I was on certain points of view until, like, I've like I've done this for only for about two years, until I've just met so many people in walks of life. And I was like, I get why you would be like this. I yeah. get why this, this rule would be this way. So even if I think like this, I empathize with this so much that I could support that. Yeah. yeah? Like, I get that. Yeah. Step out of myself a little bit. Yeah. This is place is not as scary as it looks. Well, uh, you're the first person I've come out to on my political views. Cool, cool. Yeah. yeah. Please feel free to take my card. I got it. Uh, that's the oh. that's the one where we post. Let's chat is my own okay. personal one. I got you. My name's Ty. I'm yeah. working on a way to talk to anyone about anything. Yeah. Can I get your info? I do can't. Have, I don't have a card. Do you have an email? I do. Uh, let me write well, on the back. I got one right here. Sweet. Some guy gave us a Trump pen. <laughs> we lost it already. Yeah, it's 
I'll get in touch with you. What's up, brother? How are you? Do you have like a messenger or um, do you have like a, a text? Uh, yeah, I'll give you my phone number. Perfect, perfect. Does your phone get texts? It does. Okay, cool. Uh, you're in Alaska, that's a weird time zone. We have people from New Zealand call in on the show. Nine, eight, three, five, four, excuse me. Nine, yeah, I'll put uh, AK time zone. AK time zone. Whoa. Yeah, it's four hours different. Okay, that's not too bad. Yeah. That's not too bad. And I'll make I'll make exceptions. I'll call you whenever you're ready too. Yeah. Hank. And, uh, and Len this uh, Lenfer, L E N T F E R. Okay, I don't want to do this on camera, but I can read that. And you got my info. Yeah. I'm gonna get in touch with you. Okay. If you're willing to be on the show, on the radio show, we would love to have a conversation. We do it once every week. And best of luck to you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and, and and what are you doing with this footage? We're now? putting it on YouTube. If yeah. that's cool with you. Uh, is that is that sure. right? Yeah. Um, we're live streaming on Twitch right now too. Yeah. I bet you got some really nice comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I got plenty of friends from all around the world who love doing just yeah. this. Yeah. And I think whatever mindset I had, once I knew that I could do this, I don't fear my paranoia has just gone way down because I know I can reach out and talk to anybody. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's been interesting just uh, d just feel my own uh, uh, comfort level come and go uh, walking through here because this isn't my tribe, you know, but, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah, so, I, so I haven't tipped my hat much. Hmm. You'll learn how to shake people to be rational, and if your tribe is critical thinker, you can make any opponent a critical thinker, but it takes practice. You aren't born a critical thinker. You have to help people do it themselves. Yeah. And in a one-on-one, -on -one, you can make anyone apply critical thinking skills. If you look at my video, my videos are sort of weird because I do a whole bunch of different topics and I'm trying to learn sign language at the same time too. But Cordial Curiosity also, he's the blue card. He also does SE as well. SE is what you call this thing, it's street epistemology. And all of our videos combined, plus everyone on the white card, show people having these conversations and then we do breakdowns of like here's my mindset of how to do an SE conversation and we have our analogies and we have um, um, optimized responses to our uh, logical fallacies that we recognize like when someone says well I believe it because I was raised to believe it we have approaches that help them think for themselves why that's a bad reasoning to come to that conclusion and we make it less about, oh, you like, or you believe this is true, let me attack that position. We right. don't, we're not attacking oh, the position. Yeah. We're attacking the methodology that they're using. The epistemology, the method that they're using to know that. Because there's much less ego put into the method people use to get knowledge. And if you attack that, and they realize that they don't have a good method, they'll let go of that conclusion themselves. And that means way more than me telling them to not believe something. Yeah. Because they're doing it on their own. So, so that kind of uh, training and, uh, uh, and thought, so you're, you're, uh, you're just doing that amongst yourself? I am completely self-taught. I only yeah. watch YouTube videos and just go out and do it. Yeah. Um, there are some books that of guys who've done it a long time who've written it. Like there's a guy named Peter Bogosian who wrote How to Have Impossible Conversations. Yeah. And he... He expresses a lot of details. My philosophy is I might meet someone who doesn't want to read a bunch of books to be able to just talk yeah. to someone. And it's very easy talking yeah. with you already. Yeah. I think you already got the skill sets. Yeah. You can't train, you can't read in a book how to be an affable, nice guy. Does that yeah. make sense? Exactly. You yeah. already got the hard part down. Yeah. Now it's just a question of just getting some practice. Getting some practice and learning some like, ooh, that's a good response. I want to keep that in my head. Ooh, he shouldn't have said that. Yeah. I'm going to make sure I don't say that. Yeah. And what I found was by recording myself and listening to myself, you learn a lot. Up here it's like, ooh, I sound like a jerk or I'm yeah. speaking too quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, my uh, reading for the flight over here was uh, Malcolm Gladwell's uh, Talking to Strangers. Okay. Do you know that book? I know that book, yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got some good stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's along the same lines. I will recommend some reading materials to you if you if you like that. It's, Please. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely a reader. You're a writer. Yeah. And then um, I also recommend seeing it in action. Um, singing in action. Seeing it in oh, action. Okay. I'll, I'll send you some links. Please. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, if, if you ever want to do the radio show and, and talk with us, once one hour hangout every week, basically. Right on, right on, man. Nice, man. Yeah. Hey, you filled me up with hope. You're like one right. of the best people I've talked to here, yeah? Right. <laughs> See you, man. All right. Great guy. Great guy. I think that was the first talk where I said, like, I'm an atheist and I did not care what the other person <laughs> was on the other side. What just happened? Uh, he is from Alaska. Make sure they're not talking past the mic. Got it. And make sure this is pointing towards you. Got it. And I can tweak that mic, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he was from Alaska. Uh, he came down here not as a conservative, but he knew that the ruling party for his country was Republican, and he just wants to see. Let me let me see if I can talk through some Republicans, and because he's not, he's liberal basically, and he's like saying like I'm really kind of scared, so I figure I'd come down here, and he's like everyone's treating me so friendly, but I think it's just because I'm white and I got a blue eyes and, yeah. I'm, and I was telling him about the experience I had in the lines where everyone thinks I'm conservative too because black people are like yeah another black conservative oh yeah high five I'm like yeah I'm also in this line <laughs> and so uh, he's like I wish there was just a way I could talk to people better and and figure out how we can address our concerns so I was telling him about street epistemology basically for the whole talk oh wow giving him our links telling him about the method and like strategies and then giving him points for outreaching. I got his contact. I'll get in touch with him. I'll send him a link to Peter Bogosian's book. He was a writer, so he might like that. Nice, nice. And then um, we have a radio show that we do. So if he doesn't want to record himself, he can at least report and say, hey, I, I have some group of high school friends We're from different walks of life. Here's how our conversations went. And we can give him feedback on like what to do better and stuff like that. Nice. Yeah.